Hello, uh, in this uh, recording I would like to demonstrate uh, how to use R to perform a repeated measures ANOVA. The code that I'll be using is from this website. I'll post the, the link for you here if you want to uh, pause and make a note of it. Um, What I have uh, done in watching other videos on uh, YouTube uh, is uh, increase the font size in my R window here. And that is uh, accomplished by clicking on Edit and then GUI Preferences and you just increase the size there. There are other things that you can do as well. Uh, I'm hoping that that will let you see the code better. But again, you have the link so you can uh, return to that site uh, at any time. And, uh, and get the code and read the text for yourself. The other thing that I've done is uh, I have uh, I started a, a new script to begin with and I copied information from the website right into the, uh, the script page and then of course you do a file save as and, and save your script um, and you'll see the benefit of that in a moment. My uh, routine up until this point was I put it into Word and then from Word save it as a PDF to distribute to uh, uh, trainees or people that were interested and now uh, can just share the script file and people will have it. Uh, of course this uh, and you should practice typing code I guess is the point but anyway what we're able to do is uh, to simply uh, highlight single lines or multiple lines here right click on it and then run it and you see it posts it and runs it uh, in the R window. So on the website, uh, it's recommended uh, simply to run this code to put it at the top of your uh, uh, of your scripts and, and run it all the time. Uh, I'll let you check to you can see it here uh, to adhere to the sum of, sum to zero convention for effect weights. You should always do this before running ANOVAs in R. So I'm following the instructions. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a one-way repeated, uh, a one-way layout with repeated measures. I know this is too small for you to read here, but anyway. Um, and then we'll do a, a one-way uh, ANOVA on that with repeated measures. So first we create a dependent variable row. You can see it there. And if I type in DV over here, you'll see exactly what we just generated, right? A row containing those numbers, and uh, it uh, is identified as a, a, a column, as I understand what this C is, and it's uh, this uh, one in the brackets is also identifying it. Okay, next is a subject, so you have to be sure to select the entire row in your script to have it run. And so, if I type subject, we see what we got. Okay, and then my factor is a column, a row, but ultimately a column of the factors. So I'm not going to type to my factor in that. And then in this command, the my data left arrow data dot frame, and then listing the three rows that we just had creates. Uh, a, data, a complete data table called, called my data. So if I type in, not over there, <laughs> over in this window, my data, we see what we've done. We converted our rows to columns and we have the column headers uh, where they belong. So that's what that sequence of code was to generate a data table inside uh, R. Now we're going to generate a an ANOVA table called AM1 and run the one-way ANOVA, ANOVA on the dependent variable uh, and my factor and the uh, error in subject by my factor. So we have uh, three measurements in subject one, three in subject two, and so on and so forth through subject five. Um, but uh, and then those are um, split with the factors as well. So now if we type in, I like to type in the name of the ANOVA table to see what that looks like, and then 
put in the summary. So here's what we see. Let me just stretch this down some. So this is the formula. The grand mean, sum of squares, residuals, de uh, degrees of freedom, <coughs> residual standard errors, and again. And then when we type in the summary, or just run it from the left over there, uh, AM1, we get uh, this table. And you can see the my factor um, has the two degrees of freedom, the sum of squares, the mean squares, the F value, and then the probability, and then the decoding of our probability P less than 0 0.01 with the two asterisks is shown. So that's the, uh, the one-way ANOVA with repeated measures uh, on one factor, of course, um, in R. So those are the results. We have a significant uh, ANOVA for my factor. And then that would allow us, of course, to go on to do a, a post hoc analysis. Um, <clears throat> The challenge is that if you try to run a Tukey's on this, let me see if I can. <clears throat> you get an error message. <clears throat> Excuse me, an error message. There's no applicable method applied to an object uh, of this class. So uh, this is uh, an issue of uh, performing the one-way ANOVA in this way. The uh, contributor of this site, uh, Paul Gribble, uh, goes on to demonstrate and give the code on how you would uh, calculate the two keys to compare uh, two factors at a time. Right, so you'd have to use this code and run it repeatedly. In this case, it's comparing factor 1 to factor 2. You'd have to redo this code to compare each factor one after another. And what I'm not certain of is uh, if this uh, automatically includes the... Well, probably doesn't because you're just doing, testing two at a time. <clears throat> uh, the bond for only correction for multiple tests. So you would have to keep track of how many tests you run and then uh, if you set your alpha at p less than 0 0.05, divide the 05 by the number of uh, comparisons you make, tests you run, to give the adjusted. Uh, I realize you, you can't see it, but when you run the, the two keys and it gives you the results, uh, it gives you a p adjusted. And we'll uh, look at that in a moment. <clears throat> so I'm going to run this code now. So I'm just going to... Uh, select it all and run it so the uh, <clears throat> the sum squares and the, the comp I imagine is uh, compute right <clears throat> and this gives the uh, formula for it <clears throat> degrees of freedom uh, com compute the sample size and so on and so forth. You come down through, and then here's the F compute uh, command to see your F value, and then the P. Uh, and then this is your Tukey's calculation down here comparing uh, the two groups. So we had a significant difference between uh, those two. Now, another way that um, that I had discovered to do the ANOVA was in this fashion. <clears throat> uh, so here you see the uh, AV1. I created a different uh, ANOVA table uh, using the AOV command, again with uh, the same formula, uh, and then get the summary of that. And with my factor, get 00268. Okay, so everything there is the same. I just created uh, it with a new name, the AV1. So essentially the same thing. And then um, using this command <clears throat> to 
to run the, the Tukey, I get the error, but I, I sent, I created the, the Tukey's result table. Now if I just type in take heat TK in the right location here, it didn't create it. Right? So you, you're still not getting the, the Tukey's uh, for that. So there, there's an issue of running the post hoc after um, doing this. So it, uh, I'm not sure if there's a way to run a uh, a multiple comparison uh, two keys in the way we did, other than just repeating the code and and knowing what factors to put in there, and then applying the Bonferroni correction uh, afterward. Okay, now there's another method uh, from this site, the uh, univariate approach using the LME, the linear model. Uh, and uh, let's just put this in here. Okay, whoop, wrong window again. So this is where we ended up here, the Tukey error. So this is the code on univariate approach using the LME. So we require this package and then creating uh, an ANOVA table AM2, applying the uh, linear model to it, D dv by my factor random. So you can see that coming from the my data that we created originally. And here's the summary of it. So this gives a linear uh, uh, mixed effect but when we get down here, we can see um, a uh, the same results. So ultimately, when we get down here, we see our, our same results as the uh, ANOVA above. It was uh, 026, uh, and this is just rounded up. And then it gives us the two key comparing uh, the uh, F2 and F1, F3 and F1, and F3 and F2. And you see your uh, p-values over here. So this LM approach uh, is a way to achieve the same ANOVA as we saw in two ways above. And to end up uh, getting uh, the uh, multiple comparisons run collectively on your uh, factors. Um, by the two keys. Okay, and then finally there's the multivariate approach. And our time is running low, so I'm going to go through this. So here uh, we start. And, and notice the adjusted p-values are reported here. Um, so um, running them collectively uh, accomplishes that. Okay, um, so here we're creating the DVM table uh, and we're binding uh, our rows and columns with this first uh, line of code here. So that reorganizes the data into a matrix where the rows are uh, subjects and the columns are levels of the repeated measures factor. And then the ML M1 is a linear model on that. And then we uh, get our coefficients there. And these coefficients equal the, the means for each group. That's what is noted. Then we run an R factor on this. Then the next step is to load the car package. So library car there, and then we run EANOVA on this. And note that the command includes uh, multivariate equals false. So we're telling it to be univariate. If we don't put that in there, you'd be running the multivariate. And of course, that would be uh, uh, other than a one way. So uh, depending upon the design of the data, you put, data table you put in, uh, it would be read as a two-way or three-way or, or whatever, right? Uh, and then that gives you those results. Um, and 
and get our traditional ANOVA results as we see.